It's Charter Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are joined today by Mark Spritzer. He is a member of the Wisconsin State Assembly, one of the youngest members serving in that body. Congratulations on your victory. Thank you. You graduated from college in 09, got elected to a city council in 11, and in 2014, joined the State Assembly. How's it feel? It's great. I've been really <laughs> enjoying my time here. So talk to me about running for office at such a young age and serving in a state assembly that is pretty significant. I mean, Wisconsin's a major state. Ab absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, my time on the city council in Beloit really prepared me right. for what I'm doing here and uh, gave me the chance to uh, get involved in local political issues, to meet people in my community and, uh, and uh, understand political leadership in a better way. And uh, that really made running for the state assembly a lot easier and is what led me to do that because I was seeing how state issues were affecting Beloit and other local communities and wanting to have a voice in that. So talk to me about running for the assembly. It's one thing to run for a local city council. Beloit, how many people about? 37,000. Yeah, so actually that's a fairly decent sized city. Your assembly district, not much bigger than that, about mm -hmm. 55, 56,000. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of a jump, but talk to me about that jump from city council to uh, state assembly. Well, one of the things I did was the same thing I did when I ran for city council, which is knock on a lot of doors right. and meet voters face to face and introduce myself and uh, especially doing that in the communities besides Beloit that are right. in the district uh, that didn't really know me yet. Uh, and, uh, you know, putting together mailings to introduce myself, going to a lot of events, walking in parades. And uh, luckily I had a pretty long time to do that. Uh, the, the seat opened up because oh. Representative Ringhand, uh, who had held the seat, ran for the state Senate. And she announced that really over a year before the general right. election and, uh, and about 10 months before the primary. And so I, I had a good opportunity to get out and meet people. So it's interesting about your election is at some level, it was a foregone conclusion. You were elected in 2014, and you were elected from a district that is overwhelmingly Democratic. Mm -hmm. Blessings and curses, you know, when you look at that, it must have been nice to yeah. know you were not in a targeted seat. But it begs the question about how districts are drawn. Mm -hmm. And there has been a, a good amount of consternation about the line drawing in the state of Wisconsin, which is done by the legislature and not done independently. Right. Talk to me about that and what you've learned over the last you know, year or two since you've been looking at this process. Sure. Uh, so I had a contested primary. Right. I had no opponent in the general. And that ah, was, so it was really a foregone conclusion. It really was. Right. And that's what we're seeing in a lot of districts right. around the state, both Democratic and Republican districts, is that uh, people really aren't afraid of facing the voters in a general election because things are so gerrymandered uh, for one party or the other. But they're afraid of a primary. And that, of course, right. pushes people uh, both to the right and the left. Uh, and we've especially seen that in terms of the Republicans who have had, I think, a lot more vulnerability to primary challenges, more uh, ideological purity uh, that they've had to face. And uh, I'm the lead author on a bill that would uh, create an Iowa-style nonpartisan redistricting uh, effort in Wisconsin to make sure that we don't have politicians drawing those lines because they're drawn, first of all, to benefit the majority party that's drawing them, but second to benefit incumbents who get to choose their own voters instead of having voters choose their representatives. Now, what's unique about the Iowa style is it does allow the legislature, in fact, it mandates mm -hmm. legislative involvement. Because as we know, as we speak today, there's a challenge in the US Supreme Court to a system in Arizona, California, mm -hmm. where the legislature is completely cut mm -hmm. out. And apparently that may be unconstitutional. You need some legislative involvement. Right. And, and to be honest, I like the Arizona and California model. I think that getting the legislature right. out entirely would be great. But the reason we're pursuing the Iowa model is precisely uh, for that reason. Uh, it should withstand constitutional scrutiny, regardless of how this case turns right. out. But as I understand it with the Iowa model, though, when it goes back to the Wisconsin legislature, it would be an up or down vote. I right. mean, there are a, f a few machinations if it goes down, then it goes back to the committee to see if there's a way to tinker with it. But generally, you're looking for an up and down vote. Right. And and that has worked in Iowa. They, they have once, I believe, voted down the first map that the commission sent them. Uh, they've never gone beyond the second map. And so it creates that political pressure to say, you've got a fair map, you can vote up or down on it. And they, they tend to vote up on it. And I hope that's what would happen. Here. Now, in California, I know for sure, in Arizona, I believe, these reforms came about as a result of a popular initiative. Mm -hmm. So not through the legislature, mm -hmm. but it went directly to the voters. In Wisconsin, is there that possibility? 
we don't have that system. Uh, really, uh, even a, a either a non-binding referendum or a constitutional amendment, uh, still both of those would originate from the legislature. Uh, so we don't really have. Uh, you can't bypass the legislature and go to the voters. Right. We have had uh, advisory referenda in different uh, counties and things like that. You can do that, but in terms of actually legislating that way, it doesn't work that so way. So here's the challenge for the minority party, the Democratic Party. If you look at the last few cycles, you can see why they like, mm -hmm. you know, meaning the majority party, drawing the lines as they see fit. Again, I'm not taking a position, but if you look at, for example, in 2010, the Republicans had 56 seats in the assembly, and that was under old lines. Mm -hmm. By 2012, they're up three seats with new lines, even though uh, Tammy Baldwin, a Democrat, wins by six points, Barack Obama, a Democrat, wins by seven points, and then in 2014, up another four seats mm -hmm. to 63 seats in the assembly. So essentially the assembly is 63% Republican when Scott Walker, the Republican nominee, mm -hmm. got 52%. Right. That's a nice little spread, 11 points, essentially. Exactly. And so, look, you know, all politics is parochial. So how do you prevail on your Republican colleagues? Oh, change the system. You know, we want it to be fairer for us. Um, well, I think one of the things is uh, this would be a lot easier to get done if we had divided government. And the most likely way of getting divided government in a map like this is to win the governorship. I and see. the next governor's election is going to be the one immediately before the next round of redistricting. The governor we elect in 2018 would be the one that either signs or vetoes the next set of maps. And so if that person is a Democrat, even if there is still a Republican legislature, right. then we have a stalemate situation because the governor does still have to sign the maps. And at that point, maybe we can agree, if not before, to say, okay, rather than having this fight between the legislature and the governor, let's put the power in the hands of somebody nonpartisan, give us a fair map, and we can all vote for it. So what do you make of that possibility? I know we're, you know, many years out, but, you know, this decade has been tough for Democrats in the state of Wisconsin, a state that really had been quite purple, if not blue, mm -hmm. for a long time still seems to favor Democrats in national elections. I mean, Tammy Baldwin defeated a former governor, you know, mm -hmm. pretty remarkable. And she had been in the legislature, is that right? In Congress. In Congress. So, you know, so Democrats have done well in national office, but state office has been more tricky. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, uh, I mean, Governor Walker has proposed a state budget that is not a budget you run for re-election on. Mm. Uh, it's a budget he's running for president on, but I think uh, people in Wisconsin don't want him to run for president. They want him to be here governing. He hasn't been doing that, and I do not see him running for another term on the budget record that he's going to have uh, after this cycle. And so I think that creates an opportunity, really, for Democrats to, to point out what we would do differently and to point out the kind of budget that we would have if we were in power. I, I got to ask. You. It's got to be interesting to be a member of the minority party or the other party, let's say. Mm -hmm. I think that's a better way to say it. When your governor is running for president and looks formidable. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's got to be, I got to think, you know, the national press is kind of snooping around. They want to talk to the other party members. Talk to us about that. Uh, it's it's certainly uh, it, it's certainly interesting, and, and right. I think it's getting attention for uh, what is a really uh, harmful budget that that is being debated right now. I mean, the the governor proposed a, a very harmful budget with a lot of cuts to public schools, our University of Wisconsin system, right. environmental programs, uh, really a whole range of things that are bread and butter for our local communities and that residents support and uh, and want to invest in. And mm -hmm. uh, so that's really when you contrast that with the fact that I think he spent more time out of the state than in it, uh, you know, I, we certainly haven't seen a lot of him. Uh, it creates an interesting situation. His name is Mark Spritzer. He is a member of the Wisconsin State Assembly. My name is Brad Pomerantz. You are watching Charter Local Edition.